There are several ways to find out what your type preferences are. You can use instruments like a questionnaire or do a self-discovery. I like to do a combination. In this video, I'll share a little bit about where type theory came from, the most prominent instrument and its common criticisms, another way to look at type and what you can do to make sure to get a result that really resonates with who you are. The personality type theory that people use today is based on the work of Carl Jung. He was a Swiss psychiatrist and he first published his work on psychologische Typen in 1921. It described behavioral patterns he observed in individuals over a span of many years, which he then linked to eight cognitive functions. Cognitive functions is another way to say how we use our brain. The functions describe how we are energized, how we gather and process information, and how we make decisions. Jung's framework explains how seemingly random behavior actually follows a pattern. It's an excellent tool for personal growth that shows how we can become balanced in our psyche. It also provides a non-judgmental language to better understand yourself and others. When people talk about personality type, they often refer to a four-letter code. That is probably because they are familiar with the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI, as the most widely used personality typing instrument. Mother-daughter pair Catherine Cook Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers read Jung's work and then deconstructed his framework and separated the functions from the pattern to assemble their questionnaire. The result is a four-letter code out of 16 possible combinations, for example, ISTJ or ENFP. The letters are shorthand for the person's underlying cognitive functions. The MBTI is not a test because there are no wrong answers. It is licensed, so you can only take it through the company or a certified facilitator like myself. In other words, if you've ever taken a free personality test online, it wasn't the MBTI. For many, filling in the questionnaire is very insightful, but some experience it as too binary. Other common criticisms are that people think it's unreliable because they get different results when they fill in the questionnaire at different times in their life. In that case, they probably haven't watched this mindset video. Every questionnaire is a self-reporting instrument in that you control what you put in and thereby you control the result that comes out. For your best fit result, answer each question not from who you are at work or who you are at home, but from a place of who you have always been. I'll show you a little more on how to do that in a few minutes. Some people think it's outdated. Historically, the first versions of the MBTI came together in the 1940s. Isabel Myers then sifted through thousands of responses, manually correlating results, and refining the forms with everything she learned until she passed away in 1980. In 1998, the current form M was constructed in collaboration with psychologists and statisticians using item response theory. You can find information about the reliability and validity on their website. Now, does type put you in a box? No, it doesn't. Not if you're using it the way it was intended. You are unique and more complex than four letters could ever capture. Your type code is the key that opens the door to the map of your psyche. But the map is not the territory. What do I mean by the map is not the territory? Just like the word table isn't an actual table, the type model, or any model, doesn't capture all of your reality. It still is one of the best theories and frameworks I've ever found that describes why we do what we do and how we develop, though. The MBTI was and is an amazing accomplishment in bringing type theory to a wider audience. Still, deconstructing the pattern to force a choice between two equally viable options doesn't work for everyone. So how can we look at type more systemically? By exploring your whole type pattern using various lenses. They're called interaction styles, essential motivators, and cognitive dynamics. 
We'll cover these in our type verification and self-discovery session. This multiple models approach was developed by Dr. Linda Behrens, and I was certified in this method in 2012. I like the multiple models approach because it acknowledges the complexity of a person, it describes personality as an expression of active and dynamic processes, and we are honoring Carl Jung's intention to use type awareness as a starting point for development and growth, not to reduce someone to one letter and calling them an introvert, for example. If thinking in binary terms and filling in a questionnaire sounds faster and easier, you're not alone. We've all been raised on multiple choice quizzes. I'm going to make a case for the holistic approach now though, so let's look at what we mean by personality patterns. Consider the following. You and every person you know are a self-organizing system, kind of like a tree. To understand a system, we have to look at patterns, processes and structures. Types of trees are, for example, oaks or conifers. The embedded pattern in an acorn means you'll always get an oak, and the embedded pattern in a pine cone will always give you a pine tree. Trees have processes like photosynthesis that help maintain their system, and those processes look slightly different for each tree. All trees have structures like roots, a trunk, branches and leaves. The structures may change and look different over time, but they'll never start growing roots out of their leaves. Of course, not all oaks look the same, but they have certain similarities that make them recognizable. Applying this systems thinking approach to personality type, we have a core pattern, preferred cognitive processes and structures in our brain that form depending on how we think. Carl Jung stipulated that we come into the world with a predisposition to use our brain in a certain way. These patterns of how we prefer to direct our mental energy and make meaning of the world are embedded in our core, like the oak tree pattern is embedded in the acorn. Through a mix of DNA, environmental influences and opportunities to develop these predispositions, we grow into our type pattern. These patterns are there from the beginning, they stay consistent over time, but they also evolve. They are the starting point for our self-development and personal growth. The human system's processes are the cognitive functions, how we are energized, gather and process information, and how we make decisions. These are processes that serve the patterns of our personalities. We have different structures in our brains that inform and reflect the processes we use often to do our jobs and express our personality. And although those physical brain structures may evolve, our personality types remain recognizable. People of the same type don't all behave or develop in the same way, but since the processes share certain similarities, they make our personality types recognizable around the world. I mentioned preferences a lot, so let me give you a quick experience. Cross your arms for me, and now cross them the other way. Or fold your hands, and now fold them with the other thumb on top. You see, you can do it both ways, but you probably prefer one that feels more natural. Having a preference for one thing does not mean you don't do the opposite. You very much do, just like you button your shirts or play piano using both hands. Your preferred process will come more easily, more naturally, and will have less of an energy cost or will require less of an effort, so you can probably do it for longer. It might be a thing your mind goes to first, but you'll still have to practice it to get good at it, to develop skill. Your preferred process may not always be the most effective though, which is why it's so helpful to be aware of it, so you can then learn to consciously adapt to the context where another approach is needed. So how do I know which is my core preference and what is this best fit mindset? Our self-discovery journey is designed to help you find the type pattern that best fits who you have always been. Linda refers to this as shoe shopping, trying all of them on and then finding which one is most comfortable. Here's how she explains it and what I'd like you to keep in mind as we go forward. Everything happens in a situation or a context. You're born into a culture, a decade, a family. Everything has context. Your current behavior is how you behave in a way that best responds or adapts to the needs of the current context. 
So right now that is listening and paying attention, but at a concert or on a date, you'd behave differently. This is your contextual self. The context somewhat makes you behave in a certain way. Your core self with your inborn personality pattern and preferences is born into that context. Your type pattern also applies pressure from the inside out and drives you to seek experiences and opportunities that make use of your preferred processes so you can learn and grow. Think, would Beckham have become Beckham if he'd never had access to a football? Or would Taylor Swift be the same person if she'd never had access to a guitar? Right? There is an inner drive to develop our innate talents and sometimes that competes with the pressures from the context. So you get older and you learn to adapt your behavior to certain contexts. And then when that adaptive behavior is something you do a lot, like for a job or a hobby and you get good at it and you develop skill, it becomes an aspect of your developed self. Your developed self is who you are now, how you express your core drives and needs in line with outside pressures from the context, plus all the skills you've developed over time. So in other words, your contextual self is where you use your type. Your core self comes into the world with that innate pattern of preferences. And your developed self is the skill you develop using your preferred functions over time. When we're looking for your type preferences, we're looking for the core self, how you came into the world. So as you go through our self-discovery process, the question again isn't whether you should answer from who you are at work or who you are in a crisis, because those would be your contextual selves or the roles you have. You also shouldn't answer from a place of who you were told to be or who you want to be after your next PhD. That would go into your developed self. To get to who you are at your core, you want to answer from the place of who you are and who you have been over time. Everyday situations, everyday joys, everyday annoyances, all the things that really resonate at a deep level. And once we know that starting point, we can dive deeper into how it's showing up for you in your life and relationships and how you can practice developing the other functions for balance and wholeness. Here's the caveat just to manage expectations a little bit. It is my intention and indeed my deep desire to help you find your best fit personality type pattern, but I cannot guarantee that we'll neatly land on one within an hour. Depending on your age and your life experiences, you may find yourself in more than one description. I'll remind you to approach the self-discovery from a place of curiosity and exploring your core, but in the end, you are the expert of what is your best fit type. So, to sum up, we talked about how Carl Jung's theory is a model and a framework that helps us understand how we are energized, how we use our brains to process information and make decisions. Our personality type patterns are inborn, but they are not a static box. They are a starting point for growth, like an organizing principle around which our human system develops. Finding out what your innate type pattern is, is a journey. The older you are, the more experiences you've had in life, the more layers you'll have to peel back. Just remember to separate context from core. Taking a multiple models approach where you gather multiple data points and discuss them with a professional is more likely to help you get to your best fit result than just filling in a free online test. The main thing to remember is there are no wrong answers. All type patterns have inherent skills and opportunities for development. Having the awareness gives you a non-judgmental language to describe who you are and the tools to develop and grow with purpose. Thank you for watching this video and now I look forward to working with you.